This video is for the MAGA voters, former Democrat voters, uh, disengaged voters who chose Trump because they knew his name, and insecure men who thought that their masculinity was being challenged by a female leader. Oh, and the 15 million potential voters who chose to sit this one out. What exactly did you just vote for? What kind of administration will you get? And will it prove fruitful for you as you had hoped? Firstly, it's worth noting that Trump is an infamous liar. The Washington Post recorded and tabulated the 30,573 lies he told during his first presidency. It was published in January 2021 and was widely distributed. Maybe you missed that. Maybe you watch Fox News, who failed to cover it, and in most cases just repeated his lies, which might have made you think that what he had said was true because they also say it on TV, but that's not quite how it works. You see, Trump realised decades ago that telling the truth is not a requirement in life, in business, on the campaign, or even in the White House. And if you're looking for a simple explanation of the difference between Republicans and Democrats, it's that Republicans lie and win by lying, and Democrats tell the truth, and it often costs them elections. So Trump lied to you about the things that likely enticed you to vote for him. And if I was to guess, the cost of living was at the top of that list. You know, gas prices, grocery prices, cost of rent, etc. Well, here's the first reality check. Trump won't intentionally be changing those things. He just lied about it to win your vote. You know, economies are slow to change, and the Biden-Harris administration has been working tirelessly to invest in the economy to help it grow. Inflation has dropped from a pandemic peak of 10% in 2022 to just 2.4% now, which is close to normal. Real earnings growth under Biden flipped from negative to positive earlier in the year, meaning that wages are once again growing by more than inflation. Employers have created more than 16 million jobs under Joe Biden, the most during any presidential term. Earlier this year, manufacturing employment hit a 16-year high. There hasn't been a recession in more than four years. And remember, the Biden economy will continue to improve beyond January, allowing for Trump to take the credit for it after his inauguration. And he will. The same as he took credit for Barack Obama's economy in 2016 through till the pandemic hit when he helped crash it. Trump has zero record as being good with the economy. He conveniently shapeshifts the timeline of history to make himself look good. But unlike him, the data doesn't lie. So, Expect your rent to increase, your wages to go down, your groceries to get more expensive as Trump's economy starts to kick in in mid to late 2026. Meanwhile, his further tax cuts for billionaires and corporations will only grow the national debt and bring less money into the Treasury. Not that Trump needs tax revenues to work with, he plans to cut most of the public programs that Biden and Harris had committed to. Goodbye Chips and Science Act, goodbye Infrastructure Bill, goodbye to the benefits and entitlements that you've enjoyed under the Democrats. That's what you voted for. Trump was so desperate to win, to stay out of prison, that he was prepared to say anything to steal your vote. And most people didn't check. They just took him at his word. You took a known liar and fraudster at his word. Nice work. Because a Trump win means that you just lost. And now let's take a look at Trump's claims about closing the border and deporting 15 million migrants who are supposedly taking your jobs and bringing drugs and who are rapists. Firstly, Trump is the rapist. Don't take my word for it. A jury found Donald Trump liable for sexually abusing advice columnist E. Jean Carroll in 1996. Trump is always projecting. And as for closing the border, closing the border is actually a figure of speech. There is no direct way the president can do it. Disgraced former President Trump and President Biden have both come close. Trump first with Title 42 and more recently with Biden issuing an executive order to block migrants from asking for asylum. But neither measure directly prevented migrants from coming into the country and both were challenged in court. A full border closure would violate federal laws, granting people the right to seek asylum. 
But nevertheless, the future Trump administration doesn't appear to care about the rule of law. Trump will continue his campaign of mass deportations that could eject millions from the United States via sweeps and raids, internment in staging camps and large-scale removals, possibly employing the military to do the work. Trump and his advisers have referred to using the National Guard or the military in invoking the 1798 Alien Enemies Act. And with a new swathe of MAGA judges in place, including at the Supreme Court, Trump could get his way. America, the land of the free, a country built on immigration, will become Nazified, and Trump won't care who gets separated from who or whether these people are children or women. He is ruthless, gutless, and racist, and you just voted for that. Trump's closest adviser, Stephen Miller, said last year that mass deportations could involve detention camps built on open land in Texas near the border. That's the same Stephen Miller who, at the recent rally, said America is for Americans and Americans only. Mexico's government is bracing for threats, including Trump's campaign promise to impose tariffs. Trump vowed, if elected, to impose a 25% tariff on Mexican goods, escalating to 100% if Mexico's government does not act to stop migrants and fentanyl from crossing its northern border. Deporting people back to Mexico would severely damage the country's economy by increasing the unemployed population and slashing remittances. Incidentally, trade between Mexico and the United States exceeded $800 billion last year. And Trump would be compromising that and a whole lot more. You see, these xenophobic and racist tropes aren't rooted in any real detail or economic analysis or planning. They're just dog whistles to win votes from people who want someone else to blame for their problems. Immigrants are, and have always been, an easy target. And I'm sure that all those exhausting jobs working on farms that immigrants are prepared to do for almost no money so that we can eat will be snapped up by white Trumpian Americans for less than minimum wage. Many farm workers are paid based on how much they pick, which is known as the peace rate. For example, in North Carolina, the piece rate for sweet potatoes is about 45 cents per 35-pound bucket. You see, whilst it might be fun to vote for the convicted felon, the adjudicated rapist who swears and snarls and is racist and dances and pretends to be the anti-establishment candidate, just remember that he is the very elite that you complain about. He is a confidence trickster who makes a compelling argument provided you don't fact-check him. Trump won because he lied, and his disinformation campaign was supported by the TV networks, the social media platforms, every member of the Republican Party, and Russia, China, and Iran. On election day, bomb threats were conveyed to polling sites in battleground states, Georgia, Michigan, Arizona, and Wisconsin with the FBI stating that the hoax threats emanated from Russian email domains. The Russians also ran an effective doppelganger network of websites that mimicked legitimate American news outlets, like the Washington Post, but published fake news to undermine confidence in elections and increase polarization. How is it possible for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls to compete with that level of disinformation and anti-democratic propaganda? They can't. I'm amazed that she even got 68 million votes, to be honest, fighting an uphill battle. Whilst our voting system is safe and secure, our information system is not. The corporate media has been bought, and that means the end of normal free and fair elections. The democratic right to vote has been infiltrated by oligarchs. Musk buying votes, Joe Rogan spreading false information, Trump lying, Zuckerberg calling Trump badass, Bezos preventing the Washington Post from supporting Kamala Harris. If you voted for Trump, you just voted for an oligarchy. You just voted against your own best interests. You just voted for an authoritarian regime and the end of America's democracy. You voted for costs to rise, including health care, and you just voted for women's reproductive health care to be rescinded. Don't say we didn't warn you. I'm Anthony Davis. You can find me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.